Welcome back to A Plus Parents, everyone. And wish with me today is Joshua Pittert. So uh, Joshua, super cool. You're going to love this young man. He's he's one of our math students. He's doing an Algebra 2 course this year. He's doing the self-paced version. And we'll have him share a little bit about his course and his experience. He has six siblings. He's the oldest. So he's the oldest of seven. And he told me that they go everywhere. He's 16 and all the way down to the baby who's one. So, oh my goodness, what it's like to be, you know, in your home, everybody is homeschooled. Uh, the baby, I'm sure, will be homeschooled as, as the baby <laughs> gets older as well, right? Mom, dad there. So uh, Josh lives in Idaho. So just super cool to uh, to find out more about him. What you're going to hear from Josh about is that he's 16 now. He's almost 17. And he's really interested and passionate about homeschooling, all so much so that he's that his family has a YouTube channel. And some of his YouTube videos talk about the benefits of being homeschooled. So he's very, very passionate about this, which is really great and really sharing with people for people that maybe they don't fully understand what it's like to be homeschooled. So if you've ever thought about when you're talking to other people and you want to share with them about what homeschooling is like, well, Joshua today is going to give us some tips on what that's like. So first of all, Joshua, thanks for being here. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's really, thanks. I know your day's like super busy with all the siblings. No, I'm super here, excited. But... This is This is going to be cool. Yeah, it is going to yeah. be cool. So that's awesome. So, um, so let's just start. Like, you're, you know, what's your day like? You know, here you, you got six siblings, mom, dad, right? And here, here you go, right? What's your average day like? Yeah. So should I? I guess I'll start when I wake up and just kind of go through like the schedule and all. So, sure. Um, I usually wake up around like six, six thirty, but I, I do jazz band at the school. It's an, it's an early morning course. So I play the guitar in the jazz band. And so I'll go there and that's been a really good experience. It's challenged me a lot because jazz is a really hard, difficult type of music to learn, but it, it's probably widened my view a lot in music and everything. Then I'll come home, um, I'll eat breakfast and everything. And then uh, I have a lot of things. So I take a lot of classes. So I have Mr. Deese, the self-paced algebra two right now I'm doing. And then um, there's a physics class, there's this new, thing online it's called the well-educated heart academy i don't know if you've heard of the well-educated heart homeschool thing but it, it's kind of i don't love the name but um it's it's been really good it's taught differently it's taught by um, dr pablo ribaldi and he's doing physics right now and i'm taking physics with him um but they have a lot of class like next year i'll be taking entrepreneuring um in that and so that's been good um and then i usually write i have a lot of stuff all um Essay is all right. Right now, I've been writing kind of a whole ton of stuff because I'm applying for a BYU clamp called SOAR. And it kind of helps you, like, it gives you a glimpse of what college is like and everything. And then it helps you, like, talks about how you can get scholarships. It preps you for the ACT and stuff like that. And so I've been writing a lot of essays for that lately. You have to have four essays. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll write that. And then I'll have books and other things I'll be reading. Um, I read, there's this one book that I've read called Atomic Habits that I read there. So that that's all kind of the morning time from like 9, 8.30 to 12, 1. And then usually at 1, I have a lot of different things. So I take voice lessons. So some days I'll have voice lessons on that that time from like 1 to 2 or, uh, or 1 to 3 kind of more. And then I take a religious class at the school, seminary. Um, so it's not actually at the school. It's in a different building, but it's next to the school and it's kind of release time. And so I'll take that um, every every B day. And over here, the school's only four days a week. So it's from Monday to Thursday. And so it's just every every other day. And um, so, yeah, I take that class and then I usually have practice. I do. I run cross country and do track. And so there's. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's fun. <laughs> hey, man. All right. So let's see if I got this. So you're going from music, right? Then you're doing yeah. physics and math and your advanced classes as a, you know, as a, as a high school student, uh, you're getting ready to do an entrepreneurship program, right? That you'll be looking yeah. at. Yeah. That's so I'm cool. I'm excited right? for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, yeah. I've always liked kind of entrepreneuring and stuff. And so I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I, I think I might want to go into like marketing or something, if not. Very music. cool. <laughs> and then you're, you're taking class as part of a seminary. So that's awesome. Yeah. You're yeah, doing that. Good. And you run cross country on top of all that. Mm -hmm. And then you've yeah. got six six siblings to be, six be siblings. you know, that your big brother too. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. All right, and and so that's your average day, right? Yeah, so, that's basically that's what happens. Cool. Hey, tell us a little bit about. So your school has you as a homeschooler. You can still come to the school and do some classes. So tell us a little yeah. bit about how does that work. 
so yeah it was, it's been interesting so the seminary isn't actually um it's not actually through the school it's through um the lds church and Okay. so um that one i would i would have taken anyway um the jazz band so i don't get like high school credit here they i just i'll just like apply to colleges and stuff as homeschooled and so and then i'll take the act or or there's other options that i'll talk about in a little bit um but um So with the jazz band thing, I started coming and they just needed a guitarist. So at the start, I kind of just went and then I talked to them and they said, either you could um, go and they'll still like give you the high school credits and you can sign up or, or you can just go take the class because the schools are all the subjects and everything, are not classes, there you go, are available for everybody. So really, it since we all pay taxes for it, they kind of let me do it. And they That's said they'll let me take it. Yeah. that's very cool. So you can be still yeah. be part of the school and still do your homeschooling at the same time. So Yeah, that's no, I like that, especially like in cross country and stuff. It's like I'll still have like an activity card and um, things like that for the sport, but I don't have to be um, getting put turning in a grade and things like that. I'll just say I'm homeschooled. Gotcha. The only thing is um, you have to if you want to. Um, do a sport that's outside of your school district or that you're in a different area for you have to be taking credits at that school Gotcha. because they, it's like recruiting if you're not if you don't do it and they don't want any of that so Right. but other than that it's been pretty i mean we've, we've had some people say oh how are you doing it or they're going to change the rules on you but everybody is fine my coaches are always trying to help me get in and stuff so it's Mm worked -hmm. pretty smooth so far That's great. Okay, so when you do cross country, what do you uh how far do you what's a what's a normal run for you in cross country? A run or a race? You either. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a race is a 5K, so 3.11 miles. Okay. But a normal run for me, I don't know. So in cross country season, it'll usually be from four miles, well, probably three miles to six miles. So that's a, that's a normal workout with the warm up and then the workout. But in the off season training, man, I got up to 14 miles run. Wow, at Yeah, one time. I was, yeah, I was running 45 miles a week. Well, I got to 45. That, that was the max. It was fun. We would, we went and did a half marathon with some of the kids in cross country up in St. George during off season for training. And it was so much fun. It was That really is fun. that is really awesome. Yeah, Yeah. I, there was a time uh, I used to run, but it was 40 years ago, right? So <laughs> I was still older than you then, but that's kind of funny, right? Right. But here Yeah. I was and I was running and I was kind of into it. And then, uh, but I played baseball when I was in high school and I was a Oh, catcher. cool. So my knees were already a little kind of, kind of rough and running finally just kind of took the toll on my knees and I had to stop, but I actually really did enjoy it. I got up to about four miles when I would Nice. do that every other day. And it was really, really great. I was in great shape, but my, except for my knees and my knees just used to yell at me in the morning. Would you please stop doing this to us? So I said, okay, okay. So Yeah, <laughs> just stop. no, I it's just hard stop doing with this. injuries. My friend, he has a hip injury right now, and he's trying to fix that because he's pretty fast, and he wants to get a lot faster, but it's hard when he's, his hip Right. keeps hurting. Oh Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I hope Yeah. wish him well in his recovery and hope he gets better. Yeah. So that's amazing. Okay. So Just now, also on that. thank you. Here, here you are as a homeschooler, right? Mm hmm And you know, you you've been homeschooling this whole time. So you you went to kindergarten um, Yeah. in a, in a regular school, and then Mm -hmm. your parents were like, "Okay, let's try this at home." And you kind of paved the way for all your siblings. Now everybody's homeschooled, which is really really cool. Yeah, I was Along kind of the guinea way. pig. Yeah. You know, and here's what's great. As the guinea pig, right, you really kind of discovered what works, what doesn't work. Um, there was things Yeah. that, that you didn't know. And all of a sudden you do know. Right. So is Yep. there anything that you can see now that you wish you would have known sooner as being a homeschool kid? Yeah, well, there's a whole ton of things. Um, one thing is, I've, I, I've always called it the myth of being behind. Because when I was younger, I, it sounds really dumb. But when I was younger, I would always like, I would freak out and say, Oh, no, my friends are learning this at school. But I don't know this. Or, shoot, I'm not, I'm not studying all the things my friends are in math, I was probably I don't know, Two, I was pro I was doing starting hard division when all my friends were like doing pre algebra or start going over there. And so I thought I was super behind. I'm, I was thinking to myself, shoot, where do I'm probably not going to make it. I'm not going to be able to go college and all these things. 
But then, um, and then it's all kind of started with math. I started and I was, I found these math books. In fact, they're probably right here at the bookshop. They're called the Learn Math Fast System. Mm -hmm. And I just started going through them and just, and I, I all of a sudden thought, wait a second. I was so scared and I, I was able to do what I did, was supposed to do in three years, two years, and one year. And I was just thinking, oh, so there's, is, is there really such thing as being behind? And then I started realizing everybody has a different learning path and, and everybody learns differently. And the school systems are kind of tried to encompass everybody's learning pattern. And so when somebody is behind, it's kind of harder for them to catch up because of how the school system is created or if they're trying to go ahead, like they're really, really smart. Are they catching on to this concept really fast? It kind of limits them. But I didn't see that. I was just always worried what everybody else was doing. But you should, I think the first thing you should think is, it's my own learning. This is my own education. I'm not trying to do what everybody else is learning. I'm trying to learn what would suit me the best. And so that's kind of the first thing I would um, say is that, yeah, that you should, um, you shouldn't be worried about what everybody else is learning or anything, because it's not a race. And you'll find that if you just focus on your best learning pattern, everything that will work out, because I know that that's one thing I struggled with in junior high law. I was always worried about, I wasn't as smart as somebody else, or I wasn't everybody at school to do more than I was. Wow. That's, yeah. you know, that's pretty amazing to discover that. And I love you said what you call it, the myth of being behind. Yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. I like that. But you also looked at, you know, you looked at your learning style and what works for you. And that once you kind of got the ball rolling, right, it is possible to make up a couple of years in one year if you need to do yeah. that, because you've put in place all the other things you wanted to put in place or needed to get put in place first so that the other things then can get caught up. So super yeah. cool. Yeah. And it's, that you know, how how much what's that like to kind of go through each day thinking that I'm behind, I'm behind, I'm behind I and then find out. It's just a myth. I'm not behind at all. And I'm right where I need to be. So that's really great. All right. So that's something really cool for people thinking about it right now. You know, they get in that place about being behind. Don't worry. It's all good. It's all good. So, yeah. You know, one of the other things that I think homeschoolers run into or people that are thinking about becoming homeschoolers is they're like, well, how am I going to make friends? And how am I going to be able to do social time and things like that? Sounds like you've done a pretty, pretty good job at managing that. Right. So how do you make friends while being homeschooled? Yeah, that's a that's a pretty big question. I get that from so many people. And when when the YouTube channel was some of the, one of the big videos are getting a decent amount of views, I got a comment probably like every other day uh, asking, "How do you make friends?" or "How do you have friends?" I was thinking, "Well, this is really weird. How come people are all wondering about friends?" But I know, I guess I was probably in eighth grade, ninth grade maybe, and I I was kind of disappointed because all my friends were public schooled and everything and I thought oh they're around each other all day everything and I felt left out um and so it's always kind of a struggle and so everybody's like even now sometimes I'm like oh I feel out of the loop my friends are kind of always around each other like family and I only see them every once in a while but I found that this high school was just kind of your friends I'm not gonna say your friends are temporary because that's like really mean but there's you kind of need to look for the relationships that actually matter. Cause I know with my closest friends that are closest to me, I probably don't see every day. I'm not gonna, I'm not planning on seeing every day, but I, I feel like it's more important to gain like closer relationships like that and, um, and be friendly. And then, um, what else? Like, like at school, there's always like the groups and stuff. And then sometimes you realize people want to be your friend maybe because you have other friends and it's like a network of friends and all of a sudden this, and it's like more of like a social status than actual friendships. And so that's one thing I've oftentimes looked for. Um, wow. So you're actually curious about the relationship. I love that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And let me, let me guess, you probably have friends that you've made doing cross country. Yeah. So there's your buddies in the band, of, right? You, you yeah. Have your band mates, right? Your friends there too. So <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's really, I think it's really important to do extracurricular activities and try to get to know people because a lot of people think if you're homeschooled, oh, you probably just do all your stuff at home, which is not true. I just educate myself at home. I, I go, I, I meet people all over and it's just, um, so I try to do a lot of extra activities to meet other people, um, like, like with cross country and track and band and other things like that. When I was younger, I did Taekwondo and I met a lot of good friends there. 
and I'm still friends with them. Like I don't do a class with them anymore, but I still keep in contact with them, hang right. out with them all the time. And I also think it's also important though, when you're doing things like that to have, I'm not going to say social skills, but just be social with other people. Cause you can go do the things and then totally be a wall and walk home, but instead look, try to get to know people because people are, um, tend to want to talk to others that are trying to get to know somebody. If you, if you show an interest in somebody, they'll start talking to you and they'll be your friend faster, you know? That's really great. It's really great. So it, it, it's funny too, because I was just thinking while you're sharing, right? One of the things people say sometimes for homeschooling is like, you know, that it's not even the fact that you don't have friends. It's just about that it, you're not socialized. Like, how do you get out there? But you're yeah. very personable. And I think you just pointed to what makes it what makes it different for you that really stands out what you just shared with me was that you're not interested in just how many friends you can have you're interested in the kinds of relationships you can have by making friends and i think that's huge it speaks volumes so being interested makes it you know makes it, it's kind of funny being interested actually makes you more interesting right so that's kind of a, i think that's kind of a fun thing I like that yeah yeah all right now you're almost 17 mm -hmm. right you're in the teenage years right so What's it like, you know, today? I remember when I was 17, real, real long time ago, right? But, you know, being 17 today, what's it like for you? What's What would you say, like, the best part of being a teenager, maybe the hardest part of being a teenager? Oh, man. Yeah, there's tons of different things. Um, sometimes I say I want to be 17 for the rest of my life. Sometimes <laughs> I say I want to hurry and be like 21 or something, you know? But, yeah, I think. Being 17 right now, there's tons of resources to learn and tons of resources. If you want to go do something, you can just do it. Um, like I'm really interested in music, but I've never had. So I have a voice teacher and I've had a piano teacher, but my main instrument is guitar and I've never had a guitar teacher. But since I have a lot of time, because that's the one thing I love about being a teenager is you have so much more time to learn what you want to learn. You don't have a job that you have to provide for yourself. You don't have to worry about like expenses or where you're living. And so since I have a lot of time right now, and um, I think I was able to um, learn the guitar and I, I'm able to write music and everything like that. And so um, that's, that's one of the advantages that like, I think right now of mm. having being 17 compared to other like, and then we also have a ton more resources so right that's, <laughs> that's true compared to now i know it's um, funny yeah there was no cell phones no internet none of that existed when i was 17 right but i did have my yeah. car i had a job you know it was, i had those things mm -hmm. what about the on the other side because those are actually really cool things right to be able to have the freedom to really explore and discover what's important to you right mm -hmm. and pursue your passions which i think is awesome what what's hard what's hard about being 17 today in this year <laughs> dang there, there's a lot of things i think it is also the um technology and everything and all these resources are so helpful but they're also kind of a curse i felt like you there's a lot of times like you'll get on youtube or whatever social media you use and it's just like a loophole you know you just kind of get sucked in or there's so much more distractions these days and i feel like um that is that's one of the things that are difficult like i've often thought when i'm on the track bus everybody's on their cell phones they're just watching TikTok. they're playing games game pigeon you know and i've often wondered i wonder what it's like when you were on the track bus when you were i don't know 30 years ago nobody had phones everybody would just talk to each other you know right and so it's a whole different thing and i feel like a lot of times we lose that face to face kind of conversation just because we're on our phones so much you know that's yes, I, I do. And I, re, I remember mm -hmm. that. that's actually funny. You said game pigeon. I, I play that with my kids. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I always fill out a loophole because I have an Android right now. And I'm like, darn it. <laughs> I would play with you guys. Maybe <laughs> talk about something. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, how much of that doesn't happen now that you're, you know, you're kind of caught up in your phone. It's interesting. Here we are in this world where everybody's saying about being homeschooled is about how you don't get socialized. And yet mm -hmm. you're pointing to that when you look in today's world, right? And you're on a bus with 20 or 30 other kids that are all in public school. They're not talking to each other anyway. They're on their phones, right? Kind of in yeah. their own world. So that's a kind of a funny thing to think about what socialization looks like being isolated by being on your phone around a bunch of other people all at the same time. I don't think yeah. that's supposed to be the definition of being socialized, but if you look, it might yeah. look like that, right? 
So you have another really, really great opportunity, which is you get to be around your siblings all day long. So, yeah. you know, and when I say opportunity, right, there's advantages and disadvantages that come from being there, especially oh, yeah. being the oldest and your big brother. And, you know, so you're setting the, be the role model, you know, in a way. And so they're watching you, right? You're leading the way. So what are some of the advantages and disadvantages to being around your family all day? Sure. There's a, there's a tons of advantages and disadvantages. Um, a lot of the advantages are, um, I mean, one of my biggest goals in my life is to become a father someday. And so dealing with my siblings all the time, I've learned to kind of help take care of the family, help participate with the family, everything. Um, a lot of times when you're at school, I mean, you're there, what well, my friends are there, they get there at seven for jazz band and then they're home at six after practice, you know? And so mm -hmm. you're not with your family that much. And so you're kind of losing that, learning how to kind of, take care of a family and interact with the family doing certain family situations and you're losing that relationship that you could have with your family members and and i'm not saying you can't have a good relationship with your family members if you're public school i'm just saying i've gotten a greater opportunity to get a lot better relationships with my siblings but it's also really hard because it's not the easiest to study sometimes and things like that i, I mean i'm blessed to have this room where i can just it's just our library where i can go in there by myself and study but it's hard when there's tons of siblings coming in, people running over fights, sibling fights. I mean, they think there's no school fights when you're homeschooled, but there, trust me, there are a lot of school fights when you're homeschooled. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Right, yeah. Especially especially when they're little too, because it's like they're yeah. running my chair and they took my toy and, you know, I want that, yeah. right? <laughs> that happens too. Wow. wow. Well, that that's actually pretty amazing. And I'm going to take a guess. You probably can change a diaper with no problem. So does that, does that sound right? <laughs> uh i'm not gonna say with no problem i can okay. change a diaper but i don't really like poopy diapers they're not the best uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so usually i'm acting like i'm really bad at it so my mom will rather have my sisters change it so i don't get okay to change the diaper as much <laughs> you're there you're there as a support you're the support yeah mother. okay i'm I like you. give the baby give addy to maylee i'm i'm not very good at changing diapers i so got you oh yeah. that's okay <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you know you know you're seeing so you know here you are and you're looking at you know what's it like being a teenager you're looking at being at home with your siblings all day long uh you see your friends that are in the home that are in public school right do yeah. you ever think about or consider going back to public school yeah no i've so like i said in like eighth ninth grade i, I was feeling sort of out of the loop and I feel like that happens a lot. I saw that with my sister when she was, she's kind of that age and you always want to go back because your friends are there, you know, and you want to be a part of that. And I think that's just how we are as humans. We want to be a part of something. And so I, I felt kind of left out. And um, so, yeah, I probably did consider a little bit. I never really tried or anything where I, I know a lot of kids try to go back because they feel um, left out socially, but um. I, I know I'd rather have spend I'd rather focus on having a better education than sacrifice that education for the social life, you know. And then I've also still had like a lot of good friends and anything anyway. And so it's not really a sacrifice. It's just sort of a different point of view, you know. Wow. No, then it's a great point of view, right? And mm -hmm. and it's a point of view that you've done the thinking on to look and see yeah. what's important to you what's going to make a difference in your life. And at the end, of, you know, at the end of the day, there's like, hmm, well, do I want to, go? it's kind of funny. Do I want to go to school where I'm around a group of people that are on their phone all day by themselves, not interacting with each other, yeah. but they're only grouping around each other. Right. So yeah. it's kind of funny. That's almost what it might look like. So, oh, that's wild. So, you know, you look now, cause I, there's so many different things that you're into and you're up to. And, you know, if you, would you, could you tell if you weren't homeschooled, right. And you were in public school, is it, does it look to you like there are things that homeschooling has made possible for you that you may not have been able to do if you were in public school? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, writing music is probably, it's a really big part of my life. It's been, whenever there's something that comes to my mind, there's a certain, I had a sad day or something bad or I was happy. Like that's what I go to put my emotion into, you know? But I don't think I would have have any of that that's just the start but i don't think i would be able to write the music as much or kind of um like play the guitar or sing all that stuff because i want to have the time and i want to have the time that i could put into that um 
but I also think I've been able to gain just a lot more love of learning and appreciate of learning because um, usually in school you get kind of caught up with grades and assignments and stuff like that, which those are those are helpful, but we also can we all we always confuse those or people will always confuse those for what learning actually is. When learning is actually something that's going to benefit you and that you can use that you can like take the concept and use it in your own life instead of being able to fill out the test right or get the grade perfect, you know? And um, um, so I've oftentimes, uh, I've been able to kind of gain a greater perspective on what learning really is and how, how and actually I do it because I want to learn it, not because I have to fill that out or I have to do something like that. So wow. I've been more motivated. Yeah, I love that. And that really points to something. So one of the things you can, I would say, right, as being somebody mm -hmm. who's homeschooled, you developed a passion for learning that maybe wouldn't happen if you were in public school. You might you mm -hmm. might have developed a, a skill for getting things done, but not necessarily yeah. a passion for learning. So that's really, really great. All right. Yeah. So now you, you're a musician. Uh -huh. uh, you're an athlete, right? You talked about marketing. So what do you see your plans for the future? And, you know, oftentimes, like when you're getting ready to turn 17, I know when I was a teenager, it was like, I really didn't know what I was going to do. You know, I kind of thought about it and I had all these different ideas. Actually, I thought I was going to play baseball. And, uh, but I also wanted to be in a rock band, right? Oh, and nice. sure, I didn't do either one of those things, right? So here we are today. But what about you? What are your plans for the future? Yeah, no, it's crazy. I'm kind of like where you are. I have a lot of ideas. I know. I want to do some sort of entrepreneuring, but I'm not a great engineer. I'm not very mechanical minded. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I thought it'd be cool to be kind of on the marketing side and kind of create it. That's, that's like why I started the YouTube channel when I was younger. I started a YouTube channel. I thought, oh, I'm going to be big. I'm going to make Lego videos. And it was the nerdiest thing I've ever done. But you know what? <laughs> it was cool because I like seeing something and like seeing it grow, you know? And it really didn't right. grow much. but it was fun for me and so i've always thought marketing would be cool i also wanted to go into music but it's kind of a it's a difficult uh, career to get into so i'll probably i'll probably be doing that too but it'll probably just kind of be with the other all the other things like i said i want to be an entrepreneur so i'll just kind of be one of the business ideas you know right and so yeah but i think that'd be cool just to produce right and perform i really like performing for other people which is fun so that'll always be a important part of my life but things like that and so right now um my plan is once i get done with high school first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, serve it i'm planning on serving a church mission uh for the LDS church and so because that's really important to me um uh, my faith and everything it's always brought me a lot of joy and being able to turn to god and everything when i'm struggling and stuff it's always been a really important part of my life so i always had a goal to go on a mission and share that with everyone, share that with everybody I could. So, wow. Um, that's, that's, really that's awesome. Do yeah. you think you'll go out of the U S or you'll stay in the U S to do a mission? I don't know. You don't really, so you can kind of on your ballot, you can kind of put what you most prefer to do, but you can't really choose, but I, I don't know. I want to learn another language, but also I feel like I can express myself so well in English once I get into spanish or one other language or whatever i'll be like oh shoot i don't even know what to say anymore but, yeah i have well, a feeling you will figure it out my friend i'm not worried about that at all yeah uh, well that's awesome it would be okay. kind of cool to go to mexico or something because that's where my grandma's from she grew up in guatemala and so oh, i think wow. it'd be kind of cool yeah yeah so. well they want to hear the message man so that's <laughs> awesome that was really yeah. great all right so you know, you've got a lot of friends that are in public school, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and there's young people and they contact you on your YouTube channel, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what would you say to a young person that they're interested in homeschooling? What what advice would you give them? Um, So somebody that's interested that they want to start or somebody that's already been... Either. So either. I guess, let's look yeah. at both. Like someone that just wants to get started, what advice would you give to them? Well, first I tell them that they should probably look at the reasons why they're going to do homeschool, because I feel like there's a lot of people there's there's different homeschool. There's probably more ways to do homeschool than there is to do public school. Like there's so many right. different ways. And so there's certain if you want to do homeschool just because you are, don't want to talk to people and you just kind of want to go home and play your Xbox all day, 
then I'd say that's not really the best reason. You should still probably do it. But if you want to go homeschool to learn and you have this desire to get a better education and you go in with like a, a desire to learn, I feel like that's the most important thing is just have the desire and what are your reasons behind it and kind of look at everything behind you of what you're doing. Because I know one thing is when I started or things like that or when I was in junior high, I just did it kind of because my parents told me to. And then it really didn't get me anywhere. Like I I'll always tell the story. My mom told me to read this book for 30 minutes when I was like seven and I didn't want to. And so I just sat there reading the last paragraph over and over and over again because <laughs> I was really stubborn and that didn't do me any good. So that's kind of what would happen if you didn't really have a desire to learn. But if you had a desire and you really wanted to learn, homeschool would help that and you'd, you'd be able to learn a lot more. Wow. Okay. How about, that's really great. You know, and I've heard people say that before too. It's all about the why, you know, and, and in fact, a lot of times we talk to parents, right? And when we're talking to parents and we say to them, you know, because as you probably can imagine, here you are being homeschooled and you're considering, well, maybe I'll go back to public school. Oftentimes parents, they're being the homeschool provider. And yeah. sometimes moms are like, they're just burned out and they're tired. Right. And it's like, what do you do to keep going? And they, they say the same thing. They say, I remember my why. I remember why I'm doing this and why I'm doing this for my children, right? And you're looking at the same reason. Why would you want to do it, right? So how about the ones that, you know, they're 14, 15, 16, your age, right? And they're thinking about, mm, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Is there a conversation you have with them to look at why they should consider staying homeschooled or even if maybe they should make that change? Yeah, no. I've had a lot of conversations with this about my, with my sister and I've often, oftentimes said, okay, so uh, that, that I go, goes back to the why, you know, why are you going to school? And then a lot of times the thing that I hear a lot from kids that age is that oh, all my friends are out of school and I feel like I don't have any friends. And I'm like, okay, well, uh, is it, are they actually your friend if they don't want to hang out with you unless you're at their school or things like that? But then and then so you kind of look at the why and why you, why do you want to go back, you know? Um, sorry, I'm saying you know way too much. Sometimes I just say no, that no, as a feeling. Um, I got you. Um, and some other things, there's quite a bit. Let me look what I have here. Um, so, yeah, I'd also, there's a lot more options being homeschooled. That's another thing that I would tell them. Um, I'd say, hey, the public school classes are also options but if you go completely there you're going to have all your time taken away so maybe and that's what i told my sister and maybe look at the classes you want to do there at the public school and she's someone to do maybe like a, a singing a show choir group or she'll probably do seminary as well or maybe a little classes that you want to do but also look at the classes that you know that will be better when being homeschooled and so i just uh, you're kind of giving up all your options but if mm. you go there that you would have had being homeschooled so Right. Yeah. But that's, really, that's a really great idea, too, for some people that they're kind of they want to they want to say, oh, I really think I'm missing people. I'm missing a thing. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like, well, what if you could do a little of both? What if you could go to school and kind of like be there in a first class or two, but still do your the rest of your school at home? You can yeah. kind of sit out and see. So that's really great. Yeah. Okay. Now, I have a feeling that you uh, have probably done this once or twice and probably often. So you know, your parents it, it can only imagine a house full of seven kids, right? So yeah. I have a brother, that's it for me, right? So, you know, I think about, um, you know, when I was growing up and what our family was like, and I think about my own kids, right? Um, and I don't have seven children. So having a family full of seven, seven children, right? It takes something on your parents' part to be a homeschool family with that. Oh, family, yeah. Right. Oh, so yeah. what would you thank your parents for? for allowing you to be homeschooled and continue to do it all these years in your entire family? Um, well, the first thing I think my mom is she's always, that's probably, she, she's given up so much of her interests or so much of her time just to learn how to raise kids better. Like for years and years, that's those are the types of books she'd read. She'd always be trying to help us. And she gave so much more time to us than I feel like most kids. So I feel really lucky that um, my parents gave me all that, all the time and gave all this time to learning how they can raise me and give the best um, opportunities for me in life. Um, but I'm all, I'm also really thankful that they um, 
told me and helped me embrace my differences because I, I used to hate that I was different. I would always be complaining and say, why I have to be so much different from my friends? I feel weird out of place and kind of the odd man out, you know? And, uh, but they always told me that it was, it was a good thing that I was different. And now being 17, I'm really glad that I was able to embrace my differences because uh, everybody feels different. And I feel like everybody feels like they should just try to be more like everyone else to fix that problem. But really, the more the solution is to embrace your differences and use them for your advantage. And I feel like that's something my parents really taught me to do is embrace my differences and um, use them for my advantage. So I'm really thankful that they they supported that and they taught me kind of how to do that. Wow, that's that's huge, my friend. That's huge. Yeah, it's pretty In big. fact, that's the sign of an entrepreneur. So don't lose that, right? Embrace it. Yeah. So. When's the last time you got to tell mom, dad, thank you for what you just shared? Um, it was probably yesterday when we, all were, right. we, were, going, <laughs> we were going all the questions you sent. You sent me all these right? questions to look over and I'm like, right. my mom's like, there's this question. I'm like, here we go. So. <laughs> yeah. Mom's kind of zero in on that question. Yeah. We did, she we did it. A pod, yeah. We had a podcast one time and um, it was a mom and and three kids who they're all grown and they've all graduated from college oh, yeah i think i saw now. like the first five yeah ago. it was one of yeah. our first ones it was right a family yeah yep and uh, and it, they were people that i first met i was just getting started in the in the industry right mm -hmm. and they didn't know i was going to ask them this and i said to them i said okay you guys what do you want to thank your mom for now you have to know those three kids i knew them when they were like eight nine ten eleven years <laughs> old right so i've yeah. known the mom all this time and it was just so great because the mom just, she was just in tears, you know, but it was just that opportunity for them to really acknowledge her. And, you know, it's kind of, I think oftentimes too, like we, you know, we, we don't thank our parents enough. I know for myself, right. I don't tell my mom, call my mom up and say, mom, thanks for my life that I have. I have this amazing life. And, you know, you were my mom and you are my mom. Right. And this all, you know, my, my dad passed away, but you know, but the opportunity to do that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just to, to do that. So it's great. So I'm glad that you guys had a chance to look at that. And yeah. of course, parents are always, they see that question, like, what do you want to thank your parents for? And they're like, let's, let's look at that one, right? So yeah. <laughs> well, that's really yeah. awesome. Well, I'm glad that you already got to take a look at that. And really, I'm glad that you guys got to look at these things together. Because oftentimes, like we don't, those are things that we just don't often, we we think about it, but we don't think about it in a conversation. We just think about mm -hmm. it to ourselves, and oftentimes we don't get yeah. to share it. So that's really, really great. Well, yeah, good. Joshua, this has been awesome, my friend. So oh, this has been so fun. Yeah, yeah. So if it's okay with you, you know, you're gonna, you know, next year and you're getting closer to being 18 and kind of moving more towards your future, and we'll see what's happening with you. Let's come back and do this again, and we'll oh, get yeah, that'd be where so you fun. are. Okay, yeah, awesome. That'd be cool. Okay, great. Well, we'll look forward to doing that. And everybody, thanks for tuning in today to A Plus Parents, and we'll see y'all next time. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye, everyone.